All right, that was our headliner, Michael Palin in The Missionary, along with one of England's national acting treasures, Maggie Smith, in her uh, trademark role there of a middle-aged sex star succubus. And we'll define that later in the show. Now then... Joe Bolster on short attention span theater right here at Comedy Central. And my guest today is perhaps best known as being a member of Monty Python. His films include The Missionary, which he also wrote, and A Fish Called Wanda. Very funny in that. He was most recently seen on A&E's Pole to Pole, and his new film, American Friends, opens April 9th. Here he is bringing a little dignity to the show today, Michael Palin. <laughs> Michael, nice to meet you. Dignity? Hello. Well, this With this lovely people. table here. I know, but I'm, I'm off today. Antique so. table. <laughs> <laughs> you like our table? Yeah, I just realized I've got, some, I've got some soup on my jacket there. It's not dignified at all. Sort of clumsy. Just don't look. Don't look. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's really yeah. a thrill to meet you. I mean, I've seen your films over the years, and, and of course, yeah, people here in this country, big fans of Monty Python, and it's, mm. it's, it's very exciting to have you here. I'm sometimes surprised I'm still alive. <laughs> really? After all no, you've just because people go on about all these things you've done in the past, you know, it's like a sort of series of gravestones. No, but you're, you're no, still I, no, productive. I, I, I know what you mean. No, I appreciate it's that. It's nice to have a body uh, of work like that, and you're when, still out there. When you're doing it, when you're making it, is really what's exciting. Right. That's the great time. And then no one knows who you are. I mean, <laughs> when we were making Python shows, no one knew. Didn't know, they didn't know our individual names. In just England? Or? We were friends of John Cleese. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and that suit is fine. Now we're kind of li living legends, and it's right. all sort of, we're not making the shows anymore. You're so like the Beatles. You either have the fame or the work, you know, you can't have them both at the same time. Well, we run Monty Python sketches on this channel quite a bit. I mean, this, uh, this channel has a, a lot of Monty work. Um, Thank you. Thank do, you. Do you find that... Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> appreciate that. I'll tell the lads. It does help. Are you recognized a lot uh, these days in the um, your... Yeah, I mean, in England, since I've done the two big travel programs, which were, were shown on BBC, the main channel, right. everybody's saying, you know, uh, where are you going next, you know, and all that sort of thing, and will you plan my holiday, and uh, <laughs> uh, all that stuff. And, and I'm always surprised um, in, in America how much, uh, how often we're, we're recognized. Yeah. You know. They're very so. popular. Mm. Very popular. Um, now, you, you mentioned your two A&E uh, projects you did uh, yeah. Around the World in 80 Days, yeah. and Pole to Pole was mm. your most recent. Tell us about Pole to Pole. Now, you, you started at the North Pole, and you went on longitude 30, is that correct? All that the was the idea, to, to try and, to tr I mean, we just tried to keep a, a line, line which would take us down through the maximum amount of land, mm -hmm. so right over the Soviet Union, as it then was, down through Turkey, and then right down through Africa. So that's what we tried to, we tried to stick to that line, because if you go, you know, sort of, you can Third degrees water. to the west or east, you go down through water, which right. would have been boring. <laughs> Not successful. Oh, water today, yes, and here we are on the left, water. And there's all oh, oh, slightly different water, slightly bigger bits of water there, but uh, all generally of the wet sort. So uh, join me tomorrow for more water. And uh, wh what? Actually, uh, I'm just going to have some water. Oh, speaking of water, mm. what mm. sort of conveyances were you? Now, I know when you did Around the World in 80 Days, you didn't fly at all, right? Oh, yeah. Or did uh, you? No, we didn't fly at all. Now, how about Not pole once. to pole? Uh, pole to pole, we cheated like mad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you just can't. There's no other way it of getting. Doesn't seem like there's any rules for this. I mean, what, no, what's no, cheating? I, well, yeah, exactly. But we 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 so kind of set a rod to beat our backs with, or whatever the thing mm -hmm. is, uh, by by saying that we wouldn't fly. And there really is no way to get to the North Pole or the South Pole. Um, uh, except by plane, right. unless you're prepared to devote about two years of your life to an expedition and, yeah. and you know, be prepared for bits of your body to drop off and, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and it was two of the most terrifying plane journeys I've ever encountered really? in my whole life, you know, and I've flown British Airways. I mean, no, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, no, what, the you going, land on going, an iceberg or something like that? You land on an ice floe in the, at the North Pole. Literally. Because, a, a yeah, I mean, there's no, you know, it's all frozen ocean there. Is there an frozen air ocean there? No, it's just, it's not land, it's just ocean that's frozen <laughs> over. And you have to go to a certain time of year, and uh, the ice was beginning to crack up when we went there. And um, we just had to, you find you're on 90 degrees north, right. you look at your little satellite navigation, you look down, ocean, you know, <laughs> this is not right, it should be white. And then there are there are ice floes around, and you have to try and land on, on the nearest ice floe to the North Pole. John, that's it's amazing. like landing at a moving airport. Mm -hmm. Well, your, your most recent project was not quite so uh, dangerous, American Friends. Now, tell mm. us about this. This is a Diaries of Your Great-Grandfather, which yeah. you found? And that's right. I, I mean, it was uh, um, some family documents were passed on to my father, and never really looked at him. Uh, he never really looked at them until after his death, he, mm -hmm. you know, because that time he was quite ill. And about 10 years ago, I looked into these documents, and, and one of them was a diary which described a, a journey by um, my great-grandfather to Switzerland in the um, uh, 1860s, and, and, you sort of and how he met a 17-year-old girl. He was about nearly 40, 
and he fell in love with her. And he has, you know, my own ancestor's diary telling me, you know, that he fell in love with someone. It was quite touching. Well, we, I believe we have a clip uh, from, the, from this. Project. Yes, well, it's an hour movie, yes, mm -hmm. and, then, and, then, and there's a clip here. He met two women. He met the young girl, and she was with her governess. Mm -hmm. And he was a very, he, he's an Oxford professor, and he's very stiff, very unyielding, doesn't know, doesn't know how to deal with women at all. And I think the clip is actually when he's talking to uh, the elder of the two okay. ladies, played by Connie Booth. Let's take a look. <laughs> Michael, I am so sorry we're out of time. It was, it was a pleasure to meet you, though, and, and good luck with yeah. your, all your projects. Good. Well, go and see American Friends, guys. American Friends. The movie is American again. Friends. It and opens in this country on April 9th. And, <laughs> this and man said he's the man. He knows. We'll be back after this. He'll be back. I won't. I'll never be back again. <laughs> <laughs>